Hey guys, Promo1701 here, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the fourth Doctor stories here on this tier list. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of them of them here. Um, C, of course, will be average. Anything in C is average. Anything above C is above average. Anything below C is below average. Uh, we also have a goat tier at the top, and usually I only try to pick one goat story because it's greatest of all time, obviously. Uh, this list will have more than one goat story, uh, but not a lot. And then, of course, we have another tier at the bottom. Kroll tier. I don't know what that means. I wonder, is Kroll like the letter G in another language I don't know about? Kroll tier. It's right. It's way down here at the bottom, too. It's like going purple on the rainbow scale. It's like under F. That sounds really bad. I wonder if anything will end up in that one. Well, let's get started. Um, and these are in random order, and I left them like that because I think it'll be fun to attack this list. Oop. Oh, there we go. There we go. I got that centered better. And I left them like that because I think it'll be fun to um, kind of attack this list with the stories in random order instead of doing them in chronological order. It might just change up how I'm thinking about them. I actually rather like that idea. So uh, we're going to do it that way. And the first one, it's so hard to read the font on some of these. The first one is Full Circle, uh, which I think... <clears throat> full Circle's okay, but I put it a little below average. <clears throat> I'm a little kinder toward it on a right after a rewatch. But it's not one I'm just overly keen on. Plus, it does some tropes I don't like, like the companion being mind-controlled. Uh, State of Decay goes straight up to S tier. I love State of Decay. It's not only my favorite story of season 18. It's uh, just good Doctor Who. I think it deserves S tier. Horror Fang Rock, also S tier. The best of season 15, easily. It's no surprise to me that it's the one getting all the love in the season 15 box set. Uncle Terrence just wrote another great story that Patty Russell just directed phenomenally. Absolutely love that one. We have City of Death. Oh, goat tier. My favorite Doctor Who story of all time. Fantastic location shooting. Uh, great writing. Great dialogue. Wonderful wit and a good sense of humor while also telling a really good story. And Julian Glover is fantastic in it. Absolutely love City of Death. <clears throat> Definitely Tom's best story, in my opinion. The Hand of Fear. I'm going to put this one in E. I don't get into the Hand of Fear very much, to be honest. I'm just not a big fan of that one. Um, I really... It just really doesn't do much for me. I know some people like it, but I, I, just, I never quite click with that one uh the first three episodes are actually pretty good it's episode four where it kind of falls apart even though the companion departure is still good but i never feel the desire to go back and rewatch it uh planet of evil and we're back in s tier i know some people wouldn't put you know planet of evil with these stories but i actually really like planet of evil uh, I think it's one of the strongest source stories in season 13. That jungle set alone gives it points, and I actually enjoy the story. Matter of fact, the only thing I don't like about it is the, the captain's haircut is really weird. The Sunmakers is a solid A tier for me. I love the Sunmakers and its use of satire. Pyramids of Mars, that is goat. That goes in goat. I love Pyramids of Mars. It's probably my second favorite Tom Baker story. And probably top 10 Doctor Who. Once again, Patty Russell. Uh, she directed two Tom stories. And they're both. One is S tier. One is greatest of all time. I love Pyramids of Mars. Uh, Power of Crawl. Moving on. Though to be fair to Power of Crawl. I do this of course to be funny. But Power of Crawl is far better than a lot of the stuff we've gotten in Modern Who. And to be honest, Power of Crawl is not even my least favorite classic Who story, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it's miles better. <coughs> miles better than some of the stuff we've had in the Modern series. So while I'm, of course, being silly here, um, 
it's definitely if this was like if I was ranking all of Doctor Who in one of these lists, like uh, my fellow Who tuber uh, DW Fan ninety one did one where he ranked he ranked like all the classic Who, and then he went back and did another one recently where he added modern Who to it. Uh, Crow would be much higher because relative to the stuff in modern Doctor Who, it is considerably better in a lot of that. It's it's still the worst Tom Baker story though. Uh, what do we have here? Is that what the devil is that? The invasion of time. Yeah, I don't really like the invasion of time that much. I I think it goes there. It's not one I like to go back and rewatch. Just it does not do much for me. I'll be honest. Uh, robot is. I'm going to say S tier. This is more subjective than objective, to be fair. Uh, and it is basically a Pertwee story in Tom's era. But I love Robot. It's one of my favorite Doctor Who stories. I actually think the story is really good, and Tom just hits the ground running. So it deserves to be there for me. The Leisure Hive. Mm, eh. Don't really care for that one a lot. Underworld. Underworld is a solid B for me. I like Underworld. Terror of the Zygons, definitely A. It's a good one. Horns of Nymon is definitely an A. I have such a fun time with the Horns of Nymon. Again, that's more subjective. Definitely not objective at all. But I have so much fun with it, it deserves to be there. Uh, the Ark in Space, boom, S tier right there. Uh, that's just a Stone Cold classic. It is good stuff. Creature from the Pit. I like Creature a lot. It does run out of gas early in episode four, though. Like, the first six or seven minutes of episode four is good, and the rest of it is just kind of meh. So I'm going to go B on Creature from the Pit. I'm having trouble trying to read this. Oh, the Mask of Mandragora. That, that font is something else. The Mask of Mandragora is a solid B for me. I like it a lot, actually. Very underrated story. Uh, what is that? The Face of Evil is a solid A for me. I like the Face of Evil, I think. Is it B or A? Mm. That's a tough one, actually. You know what? I think I got to go B. I, I think B. It's knocking on the door. It really needs to be like right here in the middle. It really needs to be right here in the middle. I'm going to say B. It's good, though. I like, I like the Face of Evil. I just don't think it stacks up with the stuff that's already in here. I mean, technically, from a narrative point, it is better than Horns of Nightmare. I think B is fair for it, though. Nightmare of Eden. I think C. C's. I'm, I'm good with C on that one, I think. Genesis, of course, Goat. And I think that's all the ones that are going to end in Goat. I think just these three. Genesis has to go in Goat. It's Genesis. Those are the three, I think, that are the Goat stories from his era. <clears throat> just the greatest of all time. I love these three stories. The Deadly Assassin. I'm going to say B. Uh, I've talked about my issues with Deadly Assassin before and what they do to kind of the lore as a whole to kind of pull it down. But on its own, it's, it's, it's a fun story. The Android Invasion has got to be A at the very least. Uh, all of season 13 is at least A. Uh, what do we have here? The Pirate Planet. I gotta put it in S. I love the Pirate Planet. I love that one so much. Ryboss Operation. <coughs> Again, that's really hard for me to decide because I love the Ryboss Operation so much. I gotta go S. I got to. I really love these stories. I know, objectively, they might not be classics like some of the others in SR, but I have such an enjoyment for them that, for me, they're S-tier, if that makes sense. Megloss is a... I think Megloss is a solid B for me. I enjoy Megloss. Um, Stones of Blood, also a solid B for me. Legopolis, I'm going to say C. It's about average for me. That's about average. That's about right for me on that one. Keeper of Trocken... Put Keeper of Trucking in A. I like Keeper of Trucking a lot. Invisible Enemy. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that in E. I'm debating if some of these need to move up to D. 
but I don't think so. Seeds of Doom, S tier, gotta be S tier. Seeds of Doom is so good. Uh, what is this one? I can't even tell what that is. We'll come back to that. That might be the argument again, Factor, but I can't really tell. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks is, um, hey, actually, I like Destiny of the Daleks. It's really grown on me. It's got a rewatchability to it that makes it a fun watch for me. Revenge of the Cybermen, solid B, solid B. I think some people might have thought I'd put it in A. I do like Revenge of the Cybermen a lot, but I think it's a solid B story. So, Tarn Experiment, I'll say C. It's, it's for average, about average. I love the location work. Brain of Morbius, A, definitely. Image of the Fendal. I'm going to say B for Image of the Fendal. I think B, solid B. Okay, that's the Armageddon factor here. The Armageddon factor. Hmm, that's a little tricky, actually. So I like the Armageddon Factor more than a lot of people do. It does run a lot, little long in the tooth. Yeah, I think B. I think it's got to be B. Robots of Death. Solid B. Solid B. Shada. A. I like Shada. Talons, Talons has got to be in S. It's Talons, Warrior's Gate. Mm. Does the execution of the story bump it up to A? I don't think it does. B, knock it. some of these in B really are knocking on the door to A. I cannot figure out what this other one is the androids of tara that's it okay the androids of tara this one really changes depending on my watch through i'm gonna say c that one really changes depending on my watch through. it's interesting most of the toms are in b that's surprising that most of them are in b which is still above average but I'm, I'm legit blown away that I have so many in B. Some of those might need to move up to A, though. Like, I like Underworld. Creature from the Pit, I like, but it falls apart at the end. Mandragora, Face of Evil is tempting, but I have a couple issues with it. Deadly Assassin, I'm comfortable with. Megloss, I'm comfortable with. Stones of Blood, again, is knocking on the door to A. Revenge of the Cybermen is knocking on the door, but I think... B is right for it. Same for Image. Armageddon Factor B. Robots of Death. I still, I can't, the story for Robots of Death for me, it doesn't get any higher. It's, it's, it's design that has it this high to begin with. And Warriors Gates knocking on the door to A. <clears throat> so still above average, if not, if nothing to write home about. We have three in the GOAT, and then we have these really good ones in S tier with, uh, State of Decay, Horror, Fang, Rot, Planet of Evil, Robot, my personal choice. Ark in Space, Pirate Planet, Ryboss Operation, Seeds of Doom, and Talons. And then solid A tiers here from Sunmakers, Terror of the Zygons, Horns of Nylon. Again, personal preference. Uh, Android Invasion, Keeper of Trocken, Destiny, Brain of Morbius, and Shada. And then we have these here that are just average. Nightmare of Eden, Legopolis. Centauran Experiment, and the Androids of Tara. And then we don't have many I consider below average. I mean, if we look, there's only six stories below average. Full Circle, which to me is almost in C. Almost, just not quite. And then, of course, we have Hand of Fear, which is good, except for that fourth episode. Um, Invasion of Time, which... I have a feeling if I can watch it all the way through with the updated effects, I might bump it up to C at least. Leisure Hive, which doesn't do a lot for me, but still perfectly watchable. And The Invisible Enemy, which again doesn't do much for me, but it's watchable. And then, you know, Kroll's kind of down here. I mean, in all honesty, Kroll really needs to be like right here. It does deserve to be a little below them. But, uh, yeah, that's just kind of how I rank them. I want to know what you think of this ranking, so comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. 
and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon. If you would like to support me on that, there is a link to that down in the description below where you get early access to videos, exclusive videos. You get to vote in stuff. You get to vote in polls for videos. I'm going to be rewatching Battlefield soon. They voted on that. <clears throat> I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane, Colin Coney, and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their support as I do the support of all of my patrons. YouTube memberships are available. My P.O. box is down there, as is a link to my Amazon wish list. Most importantly, thank you for watching.